spirit, the triune God. We come to your throne of grace at this time. You know the circumstances under which we are meeting because you are omniscient, you know all things. You are omnipotent. You are all powerful. Glory, oh God. Hallelujah. And you are omnipresent. You are everywhere. You are here, you are in America, you are in Australia, you are everywhere. You are God all by yourself. There is none like you. Glory, oh God. Hallelujah. When you look at the mystery of godliness, we see where God came to earth clothed in human flesh and was limited to one locality. But when he left, glory to God, he is now everywhere. Jesus is here, Jesus. The Christ is here, the Christ is everywhere because Jesus, the Christ, is God. Hallelujah. That is so awesome. And so we thank you for your presence. And we, we, we come to worship and we come to fellowship with you because that's what our fellowship is about. We fellowship with God as your dear children. You have begotten us in Christ Jesus, glory to God, given us your nature, your, 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 everything that you have, you have made us, you have given it back to us by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We worship him, we praise him, we love him. He's the great God, our savior. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, another comforter. My God, he's God. The Holy Spirit is God. He's here. Glory to God. He's here with knowledge. He's here with wisdom. He's here with power. He's here with inspiration and revelation. And we tap into that and that the presence, power, and influence of God will fill this place. That every person in this place and those that are viewing us online and those that are in overflow will experience glory of God and invasion of divine power my God into their spirit and that their bodies will come under the jurisdiction of God Almighty himself to heal, deliver, set free, give strength where there is weakness, glory of God confidence where there is any kind of fear the God Almighty we thank you that you did not give us a spirit of fear but of power, love and a sound mind, glory of God hallelujah bless every person the men today glory to God we thank you for the men hallelujah they are significant in, 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 in the kingdom of God because you call men you created man and you, you you give them the capacity and the ability to download and to be filled with all the fullness of God we thank you for men we thank you for those that will be bringing the word. We just thank you, Father. Give, the, give direction to everything that is said and done here. And all the glory and all the honor belong to you. In Jesus' name. And we say, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's go. We are soldiers. In the army, we have to fight, although we have to die. We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight, although we have to die. We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. We are we are going up. We're going up together. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. In the name, in the name of the Lord. Oh, we are going up. We are going up. We are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. We're going up to conquer. Watch me, don't talk, don't talk, no, no, say, don't talk, defeat, 
to me. Don't talk defeat to me. I am a child of God. And I've got the and I've got the victory. Somebody sing, don't talk. Don't talk. No, no. no. Child of the king. I am a child of God, and I've got the victory. I am a warrior, say. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I am an overcomer in the name of the Lord. I am a warrior. Child of God, I am a child of God, and I've got, and I've got the victory. Don't talk, don't talk, no, no, no. don't talk, defeat. don't talk to me, to me. Hallelujah, I am a child of God, and I've got, the, and I've got the victory. Come on, church, lift your voices. I am, I am a warrior. Oh. In the, name, in the name of the Lord, I am a warrior. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. In the name, in the name of the Lord. Come on, let's do it one more time. Don't talk. Don't talk. No, no. Don't talk defeat to Don't me. Don't talk defeat to me. I am a child of God, and I've got the victory. Oh, come and sing it again. Don't talk. Don't talk. No, no. no. Don't talk. Don't talk with me to me. I am. I am a child of God, and I've got the victory. Come on, let's close out. I am. I am a warrior. Together for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. Hallelujah. I'm an overcomer. In the name of the Lord. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I am, a I am an overcomer. An overcomer. In the name Amen. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let us just charge the atmosphere with our praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't talk, no, no. Don't talk defeat to me. 
I, I am a child of God, and I've got, got the victory. victory. Yeah. Don't talk, no, 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 no. Don't, don't talk defeat to me. me. I am a child of God. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh. It's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Can we just sing, oh, oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like. 
There's just nobody like her God. Nobody like him. We want us to be reminded this morning. He's everything that you need and so much more. Hallelujah. A doctor in the sick room. Jesus. Lawyer in the courtroom. Hallelujah. He's everything that you need. Don't Whatever your needs are, you. he's still for you. Hallelujah. There's just nobody Praise like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thankful heart this morning. 
we lift up our praise. We raise a hallelujah. We raise that hallelujah sound. We release that sound all over this room. Come on, worship us. Let your worship arise now. Let your worship arise now. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Come on, break yourself into worshiping the Lord. This is not a rit ritualistic practice. This is our lifestyle. We're worshiping Him. Regardless of how we feel, we worship you. Woo! Consuming fire, consuming fire. You're awesome. Fill this room. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. 
If you know how to speak in tongues, let us just pass the atmosphere with our gifts of tongue. You are our strength, oh God. Strength in the midnight hour, but we worship you. Worship him how we feel too. Strength like no other. May the Lord bless you all. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach him. Reach him. We're gonna do.
do it one more time. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach it. Reach it to me. In the fullness of your Good morning, saints. Good morning. My name is Mark Frederick, and it's a privilege to have been asked to bring the word this morning. But let me start by thanking the ladies who were sharing with us, to, who have gone downstairs to make space for the other men. We really do appreciate your uh, being a part of this and sharing with us. In bringing the word, I want to, I want it to be relevant in terms of what is happening. And so I thought back to a number of conversations I've had over the last couple of weeks. And Corona, we have given it too much power. And I want to just make a few things clear, because in talking to friends, they say, boy, Mark, you're not afraid. I said, not really. I said, but you don't have no underlying, any, any underlying things that, I said, no, nah, not really. And they look at me like I'm strange. So let me tell you where I was coming from when I spoke. We are spirits. We are not flesh and blood. When Jesus came, it was God who put on a human form. We are spiritual beings with a human form. We have a human body. And if we, as Christians, talk and preach and think from our humanness, then we will not be effective. We have to elevate ourselves and talk from the spiritual beings which we are. So I'm going to walk through a, a couple of scriptures and kind of tie them to you. I'll try not to be too long. Genesis 1, 27. And I'm using the King James Version. So God created man in his own image. In his image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So, as far as I know, coronavirus enters through the nose, or the mouth, and into the lungs. As far as I know, spirit don't have nose, or mouth, or lungs. So spirit cannot get coronavirus. Yeah? So I just want to make that clear. A lot of us fear out of our humanness. We don't elevate ourselves to our spiritual selves. And that is where we need to talk from. A lot of us, when we talk about healing the sick, casting out demons, if we try to do it from our human selves, we're in trouble because it won't work. We have to elevate ourselves. If we want to move beyond that, we already have eternal life. This was given to us. And my reference is John 5, 24. And this was Jesus himself talking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath eternal life and shall not come unto condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Critical word is hath, has. You have eternal life. So for those of us who were saved, yeah, and don't believe we have eternal life, we need to go back to where we got saved and pick it up. Because it's a gift, it was given to you. So if you don't have it, you need to go find it. All right? So I believe I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit being. So I don't have a physical body. I already have eternal life. And if I have eternal life, I cannot die. So when people ask me, why are you not afraid of death? As far as I'm concerned, no. I'm already living my 
eternal life no it starts no it's a free gift from god so i suggest you all meditate on it find it and start to live it the third and the last one i want to talk about is i fear no but nothing but god yeah and the scripture here is matthew 10 28 and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So there you have our reference. If you are a spiritual being, you're not worrying about your body. You really are not worrying about the body. Man, as, as, as humans, our days are numbered. The Bible tells us that, yeah? Our days are numbered. We are here in a human body to carry out a function given by God to bring the kingdom here. All right? Our body is a tool. It will wear, it will tear, it will have issues. Yeah? I'm not saying that we can't speak to it from our spiritual selves, and that is why we heal ourselves and raise ourselves to our spiritual level and speak to our body. But there will be wear and tear, our days are numbered, and man shall surely die in this sense, the human man. So I want to, in concluding, just leave three things. You are a spiritual being. Embrace it. You already have eternal life. Live it. And fear none but God. And you need to declare that. I want to thank you, and you all have a wonderful Sunday and rest of the week. I'd like to take the opportunity now to introduce Reverend Bishop. That was really deep, Both well. calling on to deep. Uh, we are a spirit being. We live in a body. We possess a soul. And we can't live in fear. As the Lord already said, don't fear them that can kill the body, but after that they can't do anything more. But we need to fear God. He's able to kill both body and put soul into hell. No. This, we are going to do the, give the, a word of encouragement, and then we're going on to the covenant meal. We want to do that to strengthen, to encourage, and to edify. Um, what or oh, the body of Christ um, I always forget the that about offering I, I never remember anything about offering but if you come with an offering and if you are online God is speaking to your spirit your heart about giving into his work then walk in obedience because God said in the time of famine you will be fed whenever there's recession God said He's going to look after you. Amen. Um, we have a, a young lady that um, she really loved the Lord and, um, and she loved her husband. Praise God. It's two things she loved. And she's going to come and um, encourage us this morning. Yeah. Pastor Hope. Praise. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our online um, covenant partners and those who are joining us maybe from across the world wherever you are just welcome to another privilege that we can just spend time together in the word amen praise god today is a good day this is the day the lord has made and we continue to rejoice and be glad in it i just want to bring to our consciousness or some reminders some truths that i think will um just to keep us focused, especially 
I, I gave thought to the fact that um, most persons now are now zeroing on prayer. And we just don't want to um, engage in what we call scatter shots. We really want to pray effectively. And so I just thought I would share some thoughts on praying effectively. Yes? So that we can really engage as how God really wants us to do. Really give God thanks for the word that was shared just now from Brother Mark because he alluded to some of the scriptures that I'm going to talk to. And we know that prayer is one of those, what would we say, overused or not overused, or can be misused. Because a lot of persons pray and a lot of us are still at sea in terms of the real importance of prayer. Um, we know that all religious organizations engage in prayer. Prayer is, is like the natural birth out of human life. I mean, all religions pray. Um, yet, in your mind, many of us, we have to ask ourselves, does it really work? Is God really listening? Does it make a difference? Can it really change our circumstances? And you, you, you have to ask yourself, why is it that so many, if we really believed that prayer works, why is it that so many people avoid prayer? Why is it that so many of us get so discouraged because we pray and get few results or no results? And so... Very often we ask ourselves, is it really necessary then? Some of us have reached places in our own experience where we become a little cynical about prayer. We think that um, God is going to do it anyway, so why pray? If God is sovereign, his program cannot be thwarted, so why pray? And I believe a lot of persons live there because we have misunderstood the whole concept of God's sovereignty. And I just want to just lay some, I know we, we, many of us already know these things, but just I want to crave your attention just to reinforce some truth in your hearts, yeah? Um, to understand then, briefly, the principle of prayer, we must understand why did God put prayer in place in the first place? And prayer really is the result of God's establishing his authority structure between him and us. I don't know if I'm making sense. Prayer is the result of God's established authority structure between heaven and earth. In other words, it is God who put prayer in place so that he can have an input in the earth. Because according to Genesis 1 and verse 26 and 27, I think with Brother Mark referred to, that is like the factor that we need, we can't overlook. And I would love us to just read it together. I know you may be online, but I think it's a good idea to get your Bibles wherever you are. Because sometimes when we hear these things, and, and they just pass over our heads and somehow they don't register in our spirits until we ourselves read them. Because that's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing. When you yourself read it and it, 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 it registers in our own spirit. So let's, let's turn our Bibles there. Genesis 2, verse 26 and 27. Genesis, sorry, 1, 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and listen to this part let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over the cattle over all the earth over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth some translation said every everything that moves which includes corona which moves 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So that essentially defines God's boundaries. God gave man authority on the earth. God delegated man with full responsibility to what on earth. Amen? So prayer was born then out of God's arrangement. For man's assignment on earth. And so these words that we just read describe the relationship God intended to have with man and the planet, by, and the planet earth. By these words, God find the boundaries of his right to legally influence and interfere with the earth realm. Am I, am I making any sense? Am I too wordy? What I'm saying is God set some parameters in place when he, when he said, let them have authority. So God has given mankind authority over this planet. And, and you know, this, 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 this sometimes we tend to under, underestimate the, the unregenerate mind somehow grasps this more than even the regenerate mind, you know. That is why they usurp authority and have the and cooperate with Satan in having things done contrary to God's plan. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. But let's let's go on. God's purpose is more important than our plans, right? God has placed his word above himself. And because of the nature of God being holy, he can't violate his own word. God had already given us authority. So he couldn't just come back and take it back. He, it wouldn't, he would not be a holy God. Holiness is what characterizes God. His very nature. He's one with his word. Listen, saints, wherever you are listening, this truth might sound like um, overwork, but it is so profound that we need to get it. Because a lot of us blame God for a lot of things that is happening. What God, I, not that he does know about it, but we are giving him a response. We are blaming him for what he has not done. Okay, so man, legal authority to dominate the earth was therefore given to mankind only. God did not include himself in the legal authority structure over earth. Man became... The legal steward over the earth realm. Man is a spirit as we learned just now. He has a physical body. He has a soul and he lives in a physical body. And so therefore, only spirits with physical bodies have right to influence earth. Right? Any spirit without a body that is on this planet is illegal. Yeah? And that's why we have been given authority to cast out devils. Yeah? So what we want to... Um, any influence or interference from this actual realm on earth is illegal through mankind. Let me say that again. Any influence or interference from the supernatural realm on planet Earth is only legal through mankind. God himself, the spirit, without a physical body, made himself subject to this law. As a result of these, these are some of the things that we need to Understand, the legal authority on earth is in the hand of human means. The creator, because of his integrity, will not violate the law of his own word. So nothing will happen in the earth realm without the active or passive permission of man, who is the legal authority. And I want to emphasize it. There's a quotation that says, evil is rife or abound when good men said nothing. In, in other words, to be passive, you're just in influential as being active. So, 
am I making sense to you? When we shut our mouths, when there is evil, we are permitting evil to exist. When we get active to correct things, then we are still having the positive in and allowing God to have an influence in our affairs. Yeah. So, the Creator, the God Almighty, the, and the heavenly beings cannot interfere in earth realm without cooperation of mankind. Yeah? God must obtain agreement and cooperation of a person for whatever he desires to do in earth. Even when he wanted to redeem man, after man plunged into the and God wanted to restore man, he had to cut the cooperation of a human being. That's why he went to Mary. You remember? And said, Mary, I, I desire to do this. Mind you, God had already told the devil, you know, you interfered with my program. And I'm going to come back and give a, a rebound. And, but God had to get legal entrance into the earth to redeem man. So that is why even the fact that Mary was a virgin, who cons she had to consent. Say, be it unto me, O God, according to your word. He, she had to give cooperation for God himself to redeem man. I wonder if we're getting the picture, if I really I want to um, um, share with you, that God, God was limited in what he could do, with what he can do on the earth without man's cooperation. Yeah? When he wanted to raise up a redeemer for, or, or to save the nation, he had to get, he had, he had to get Noah to cooperate with him. When he wanted to redeem Israel, he had to get Moses. I mean, God has always wanted to restore, but he has to get, he, he has, has to, to work, work with, with somebody, somebody on earth, earth to allow it to happen. Am I making sense? So man, prayer is then, prayer is then, prayer is man giving God legal right and permission to interfere in earth's affairs. Prayer is man giving heaven's have license to influence earth. Yeah? Prayer is man exercising his legal authority on earth to invoke heaven's influence on this planet. And let's look at some references again. Matthew 16, 19 to 20. And I like when we read those verses together Matthew 16 I think some of us might know it by heart but let's still go go there and let's read it together Matthew 16 19 to 20 let's read and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed on heaven. Amen. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Let's look at Matthew 18. Hallelujah. 18 to 20. Assuredly, I say to you, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you, my God, this is so awesome. If two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Praise God. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in your midst. This is the word of the Lord. 
and we could look at some Old Testament reference, you know that overused one, Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 that says, If my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and you know, what and what I will do. I mean, God, and another reference is, in Thessalonians 5, we are to rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. Jesus himself said, men ought always to pray and not become discouraged. So what, what, the, what I'm making here is that abandoning prayer is abandoning our responsibility and allowing the enemy's agenda to have ascendancy over what God really wants done on the earth. You see, the fact is that it was man who gave Satan that ascendance in the first place. Am I making sense to anybody here? I mean, it was man who first traded his legal authority and gave it over to the devil, right? And so, is man who alone can correct it, all right? It was John Wesley, we know that overworked statement. He says, God seemed to do nothing except in answer to prayer. And we know when God also wanted to bring a nation that he could redeem the, the, the earth, he had to look for Abraham, right? But, but let's look at prayer and the believer. Some believers give scant regard to prayer, you know, because we don't fully grasp the level and, of our authority and influence that we have. And so we, we have little regard for prayer. Yeah? Some of us have become skeptics. We have lost confidence because we have gotten so few results. Yeah? And little wonder the earth is as it what, what is it in. As a matter of fact, I, I, I don't know if I'm pushing this thing, but I believe the very fact that this pandemic exists reflects the level of prayerlessness that has unset the church. The level of absenteeism that has existed within the body of Christ, that the enemy could have such an assault on the human race, that I don't know if there's one country that has not experienced the scourge of this demon. Brethren, I'm not saying this because to bring any form of condemnation or anything. But for us to understand that we have been out of place badly and worse is going to happen if we don't wake up and realize that we can correct it even now. We can turn this... Swing the, t the tide because there are things that are going to be inevitable. Yeah, worse it, it, things are going to get worse, but things can get better with the church. Yeah, and our sphere of influence. Praise the so, so praise not begging God to do what we want Him to do. You know, <laughs> primary the, the primary focus of prayer, you know, is fellowshiping with God, is communion with Him and communicating with him so that we can understand his heart and get his influence in the earth realm. Am I making sense to anybody here? So um, prayer is meant to be one of the most rewarding and exciting aspect of our Christian walk, of our walk as believers. Because it has power to transform lives, to change circumstances, to give peace and preservation in the midst of trial. It has the power to shape the course of our destiny and to alter history. We have, I have read books where I have seen the influence that prayer did in altering the course of some things. I think um, history records the role that people like John Knox played in, 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 in England and the role that even Abraham Lincoln play, played uh, when he called for prayer and what happened in the United States. What I'm trying to say is man has abandoned 
the, their legal authority and has allowed Satan such an inroad that the, I mean, what is happening is so an assault from hell that exposes the cracks, the weaknesses that has existed in the life of the believer and in the earth. That it's, not, it's just not funny. Um, and I, but as I said, if we as the believing body of Christ can get back to basics and begin to go into the word and understand the heart of God, we can bring, to, bring change and alter situations and restore some things that the enemy has robbed us of. Amen? The power of prayer is the inheritance of the believer. When we begin to understand the principles and the art of prayer, we'll begin to un understand how to communicate with God. Yeah? Then we will have a lot of confidence, a lot of influence, and a lot of grace that is um, working towards us. Because the, the truth is, when prayer does not bring results, something is wrong. Because prayer was put in place that we could get results. Am I making sense? Look like some of us have gone off to sleep. So, every prayer, every prayer that is based on God's word and offered in faith by a person who is in right relationship with God, that prayer is answered. It's only a matter of time before it, it, it will showcase, right? Every prayer based on what God's word says and offered in faith by a person who is in right standing with God. Um, James put it this way, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes a lot of power available. That's what the um, Amplified Version says. The, the, the effectual fervent prayer look at those words effectual fervent fervent mean hot boiling i mean i mean you're not let up you're so sure convinced of what god says that you stand there no matter what the effective fervent prayer of a righteous make a lot of power available am i making sense to anybody in this house my god my God, I, 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 my prayer and objective in, in sharing this you know, is to provoke us to go back to the basics. Yeah? God is faithful to answer prayer. God's will and word do work when we understand how to put them in practice. Yeah? Because true prayer for the believer builds intimacy with God. Brings honor to his nature and character. It causes respect for his integrity. It enables us to believe his word. It, it causes trust in his love. It affirms his purpose and his will. And we get an opportunity to appropriate his promises. You, you know, um, praying without understanding and applying the truth and principles of prayer is ineffective and I want us to understand that prayer is not just going to God and mouthing words prayer is going to God out of a relationship that you have already had with him and understanding what he wants done so praying without using the word of God is like vain babbling. In other words, we, have, we are loaded with a whole volume of his will and his word and what he really would love to do. And I believe very few of Christendom really spend the quality time to understand what the heart of God really wants. And yet, when crisis comes, we expect God to just show up when we have such a scant and distant relationship with him. 
It's pathetic, brethren. And my prayer is that every one of us will hear what God is saying and draw us, let, let us be drawn back to that level of intimacy with your Father. Be drawn back with a, with a hunger to know him better. With a hunger to know his heart. With a hunger to, to, to carry out his as, assignment. Because it is not the will of God that any should perish. God gets no glory in seeing half of the millions being perishing in a Christless eternity. That brings no glory to God. And the fact of the matter is, when you think about it, all who are lost have already been reconciled to God on the cross, but they did not know, so they did not activate it. I, I, I wish I could communicate what I really want to say, that mankind reconciliation has been paid up in full. I mean, we, we have been restored and reconciled to God. And so we owe it to every human being to make them aware of this reality. And if we as believers are so indifferent, how do we expect the heart of God or the purpose of God to have the kind of influence that it needs to have in the earth? Yeah? So I just want to encourage us this morning. We were created to reflect God's character and his, his personality, personality because we are spirit beings. Yeah? God is creator and father. Oh, wow. The only reason why man can fellowship with God, you know, is because we are made of the same material. The only reason why we can truly fellowship with God because he is a spirit and so are we. Oh, God. I, I, I think if God can be sad, he must be sad when he look at us and not enjoying him. If, if, if there's a possibility for God to be sad, it, it must be when he looks at those who claim to have an encounter with him and a relationship with him and yet are not displaying his beauty, his character, his, his zeal, his passion, his works, his power. Am I making sense to anyone? And so I, I just want to encourage us this morning. The only reason why we can fellowship with God is because we are... He made us in his image. Yeah? We were created to have dominion on the earth. Yeah? And to carry out his purposes in the earth. So we were created to share God's authority. Yeah? The, the word of God in Psalm, I think it's Psalm 115, a verse God give the earth to man. Heaven is his, God give the earth to us. Yeah? So prayer is, is an expression of mankind's unity and relationship of the love of God with us. God's loving us. It is also an expression of mankind's affirmation of and participation in God's purposes for the earth. So we need to connect with God in order for his purpose to prevail in the earth. In other words, yeah? And how do we enter into his presence? I'm not going to go into all of the details, but if you read in the old covenant under in Luke, um, Leviticus 16, you'll see the, the whole outline of how the priests needed to come before the Lord and, and whatever. And that is brought out fully in the New Testament. When Jesus, let me, let me just say, for example, when Jesus said in Luke 11, then um, when, when the disciples asked him, Teach us to pray because John taught his disciples also to pray. And then Jesus gave the general outline. When you say pray, our father, firstly, be out of that relationship, meaning you would have had a relationship with God. I mean, he's no longer a distant father, but he, you have now come into a relationship where you have been adopted, where you can say, Papa, father, there's a bonding there. And then he says, that's, that's a, we have studied that um, prayer. And we have parroted that prayer. But the prayer itself is an outline of how we should pray. So an adoration out of, out of a relationship 
hallowing his name and seeking to know his will. Now the word of God is filled with his will. You understand me? And, and so he gives an illustration after that prayer. And he says, if there's a, this, 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 a man has a friend who was staying with him and he had nothing to set before him. So he goes to his friend at midnight and says, give me three loaves. And he would not, well, he, no, Jesus is asking the question, which one of you, if you had a friend, who would come to you at midnight if you would not rise up and give him as many as he needs? Yes, he says, maybe you would refer, but he says, this man got his results not so much out of friendship, but the fact that this man came with such audacity and shame, facedless, lack of shame, brazen, bold, without any kind of intimidation, demanding. Um, he said that such a man will get whatever he needs. In other words, you must know when you come to God, why, why you are coming to God out of his will. Because once you come to God based on what he has already covenanted in his word, you can't be denied. Am I, am I making sense to anyone here? Once you come to God in faith, based on, well, faith is acting on what he has already said. So once you come to God, acting on what is, he has already said, you cannot be denied. Faith cannot be denied. That's the word. It's not that you're trying to make it look good or make God look good. He is already good. And he has already placed the standard in his word. He said, um, as Jesus said in another parable, he said, Luke 18, verse 1 and 2. Men ought always to pray and not to become discouraged, not to be faint. Because we were created to have fellowship with God. We were created to, to, to share God's heart and to want God's will done on the earth. Am I making sense? And so I want to encourage us this morning to rethink our position and get back in line with the program of prayer. I mean, I'm, I'm going to stop here because I don't want to be overbearing, but scriptures are replete with persons who engaged in prayer and got results. We saw it happen in the book of Acts. We, I mean, they, they continued in prayer. They, they, they broke bread and prayed constantly and we sit, when Satan showed up we see what prayer did when Satan thought he, he was getting an inroad and he killed James the church activated their prayer and they prayed without ceasing and we saw God responded with angels and earthquake with loose Peter we, we, we see the power that prayer has on the earth when the church of God is in its position I, I really want to emphasize the fact that Prayer, I believe, I want to say it in this way, man's restored authority is the single most powerful factor that can alter destiny, reshape history, and bring God's plan and purpose in the earth. In other words, once man be understands who he has become, in Christ, that we have been restored to a position of authority in Christ Jesus, that we have fellowship with God and we can come boldly to the throne of God. I mean, without any intimidation, without any fear, because we have been put in right standing, my God, and not by any works of your own righteousness. You have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus and that you have the right to to bargain with God, as it were, to reason with God. You know what God says in the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, He says, Concerning the works of my hands, command me. I mean, God is not afraid or intimidated by our boldness when we come based on the covenant that He has already made with us. And so, brethren, I implore us, let us spend time to understand our authority and the rights that we have in the word of God that when we engage in prayer we get results and we see the turnaround that we desire amen that God wants to give because 
what we desire, God has already given. <laughs> In other words, God is not changing his mind because we have prayed. When we pray, we are allowing his will to take course. I'm, I wish I have communicated something to somebody that will influence you to go into the word and whatever it is the situation you are facing, whether it is a sickness in your body, a financial situation, a relationship that is in trouble, find what God says about in that particular situation in the word. Study the word. Get your facts on what God says and go to him and allow his influence to correct the situation. Because the hands of God are not short. Neither, neither is, are his ears dull. Yeah, I mean, God is more willing to correct your situation than that you, you can ever dream of. And so this morning, I really want to encourage you. God's love for you is real. His power that is work is real. Do not forfeit it by being neglectful. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray with you before I close. Hallelujah. Father, we are so grateful for the revelation of Jesus Christ, our elder brother, our redeemer kinsman, our righteousness, our substitute. Father, we are so grateful that you have given us a status with him, that you have elevated us where he is. Father, we are so grateful that he paid up in full the price for our redemption. Father, we, we thank you that you have made us joint ears with him. And so, Father, this morning as we come, we come boldly because you have made us righteous by the blood of your son. And, Father, we are greatly indebted to you. We are so grateful, Father, we could live our lives just thanking you just for the fact that we've been redeemed and restored to fellowship with you, Father. And so, Father, I just lift up every person that is online or wherever they are this morning. We pray by the power of your spirit that you would cause us to understand our rightful place that we have in you in the name of Jesus. And so in the authority of the name of Jesus, we rebuke every condition, every sickness in our bodies. If those who are, are, are ailing in their bodies for any sickness, we curse every sickness. Because, Father, we thank you that in your word, it is written, Christ himself became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become your righteousness, and by whose stripes we were healed. He himself took our infirmities and carried them. So Father, we decree and declare we are free from every sickness and oppression. We rebuke every harassment from the evil one. We release ourselves from every spirit of oppression. In the name of Jesus, we release ourselves from every lie. In the name of Jesus, for we know your word is forever settled in heaven. We know that healing is already settled. You're not going to heal us. You have already healed us. So we claim it in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. Your word tell us, everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. Everyone who knocks, the door is open. That is your word. And you watch over your word to perform it. So we thank you, Father. We thank you for the breakthroughs. Rebuke every spirit of lack and poverty. In the name of Jesus, we will not succumb to the, the every spirit of famine and lack that would permeate the atmosphere even now. For your word says, even in time of famine, we will be fed. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for the transfer of wealth from the wicked into the hands of the righteous. In the name of Jesus, we declare we will lack nothing in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you, we thank you, and we praise you that what we have shared 
is not man's idea, it's your heart. So we thank you. It will, be, it will take root in those who believe and it will bring honor to your name in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word. What a word. What a word. What can we add to that or take away? I think that is sufficient to give us the, the kind of upward look and the mobility and the passion of our spirit be ignited to pray, bringing prayer to another level. Amen? Okay, we are going to do the covenant meal. It's very important that we do that. Reenacted the covenant. We are making sure that this new covenant that we are under bring better promises because it has in it better things. Yes. So we're going to do the covenant meal. All right. Okay, um, cool. Who will stand against the Lord? No one can. No one can, no one.